This final weekend of baseball here at Great American Ballpark starts tonight as the Pittsburgh Pirates, still hunting for a division title, come to town in the start of a three-game series against the Reds, and it's right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And hi, and a pleasant Friday evening, everyone, and welcome to Reds Baseball. Jim Couch along with Chris Welsh for the first of this three-game get-together, the Reds and the Pirates. And while the Reds only can play the role of spoiler, Chris's Pirates team, thanks to a very good last three weeks, have a chance to win their first division title since 92. Well, how about that? They're going the postseason two years in a row. That much they do know, and the Pirates have been on fire. In fact, one of the best teams in baseball in the month of September. So, Clint Hurdle has them really firing on all cylinders right now. You see six in September 1st, they're 16 and 4. They're getting it done offensively. They're hitting home runs. Their earned run average is good. Their starting pitching has been outstanding, and that's what's carried them so far. And if you want to get a team hot like the Pirates, you want to get them hot at the end of the year, and that's where their manager's got them going right now. Now you mentioned starting pitching. Their man tonight is a right-hander, Vance Worley. Pirates have won his last four starts, and he had a very good one his last time out. Well, his last time out, he was excellent, and they needed it very badly because they wanted to put the Milwaukee. Brewers away. That's what Vance Worley did with eight innings to shut out baseball. The Brewers, of course, came into Cincinnati and were eventually eliminated. But that big game by Worley had a lot to do with that. Now, he's a guy that has struggled on the road a little bit lately, but the last few games overall when he's pitched at home, he has been outstanding. We'll see what this right-hander brings to the table tonight. And for the Reds, it's Mike Leake. He tries for his 12th win of the year and his last start of the year. September, not been very good to him. Well, you know, put yourself in Mike Leake's situation. I mean, he's not really pitching for a whole lot except something individual. He's playing against teams that are really grinding it out, trying to get into the postseason. And it's not like a young pitcher getting his first look, you know, in September in the major leagues where your heart's beating and you're really, really moved up. I mean, he's really at a time where he's pitched more innings than he ever has in the major leagues. He's got to be a little bit tired. It's just hard to get up a little bit that excited but that said the very last game of the year you know when you're not going to pitch again until next March you're going to go after it and I expect Mike Leake to really go after it here tonight. Well the final countdown is on three games remaining in this 2014 season and it starts tonight this Friday evening contest against the Pittsburgh Pirates.
may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. This, my friends, is my last broadcast on Fox Sports Ohio this year. I've had a great time. you got to admit, I've hit the ball pretty well. Today, I'm going yard. Better than yard. I'm putting this one in the Ohio River. Right down the pipe. Here you go. Jim Day. Happy oh, oh, oh. I am not worthy. Oh, I'm not worthy. But enough oh. enough. I, it's been going on for a few years. I had to come crash the party. It's it's not mean? a real ball. You're you're hitting an imaginary ball. You're fooling these people. It's this is a real bat. Not, this is a real bat. That's a real ball. Try it, Jim. No, you're gonna I, like it. Yeah, I, I'll just do <laughs> an easy swing because I don't believe in any of this stuff. Oh! <laughs> now, hit that Toyota out there, and it's yours. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. There it is, Jimbo. What do you think about it? It's a magic me? bat. Oh, no, it's a real bat. I feel Jim. empowered. And it's a real ball. How about I do your job, you do mine? All right, we can do that. I feel empowered by this. Try to point at those numbers. All right, here we go. First pitch, hey, 79. Looking good. nice. 73 in the seventh inning. You're driving home at 70. Hopefully an eight-and-a-half inning game against those Buckos. How about some Reds news? How about that? Mike Leak on the mound tonight. Enjoy the game, everybody, on Fox Sports Ohio. Swing it for the fences, <laughs> baby. Line up some first pitch in next. I think it's unbelievable. <laughs> Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Pirates and the Reds. First of a three-game weekend series that will close out this 2014 season. Clint Hurdle in his fourth year as a head uh, man with the Pirates looking to take this Pirates team into the division series right away if they can get out of that wild card spot. Here's the lineup that he presents tonight. Josh Harrison, one of the top hitters in this league, then Travis Snyder, and then Andrew McCutcheon. Neil Walker against Leakey. He's hit a uh, uh, home run and 11 RBIs this year. Russell Martin and Starling Marte, then Gabby Sanchez, Jordy Mercer, and Vance Worley against the right-hander Mike Leak. Hard to believe the Mike League not even 27 years old yet and he is yet making start number 142 of his major league career. Seems like he's been around a long time trying to get that record back to 12 and 13 right now he's 11 games under 500 in his career. 
which is awfully good for a guy that you would characterize as a back of the rotation type starter. Well, here he is making another uh, start his 33rd and as you say this is now three straight years in which he's had 30 or more starts in a season and he'll get a fly ball off the bat of Josh Harrison into right field handled by Bruce and that's the way this Friday night game gets going. Take a look at the Reds defensively brought to you by your four dealers. You have Yorman Rodriguez in left Heisey in center Bruce in right Negron and Cozart Phillips and Pena third to first Tucker Barnhart catches Mike Lee. Devin Mezzarocco out of the lineup for the second straight day with a strained intercostal muscle. Kept him out yesterday. Keeps him out today. Ryan Price non-committal as to whether he would be back in there tomorrow or Sunday. You know, it's probably worth mentioning at the beginning of this ball game and this series that the Pirates are, have a lot to play for. Yes, they've clinched a spot in the playoffs, but you know, they still have a lot on the line by winning some games here this weekend. They trail the St. Louis Cardinals by only a game. They're fighting right now uh, with the San Francisco Giants for potentially home field advantage in a play in game. So this is a team that you're going to watch the next few games really grinding it out probably right down through Sunday and that game pitched by Johnny Cueto and the quest for number 20 on the year will be a big game as well. There's a look at the National League standings. The Pirates, as Chris mentioned, one game behind St. Louis. They start their final series later on tonight out in Arizona. 87 and 72. They're not going to get to where they were a year ago at 94 wins, but 90 wins. They'd love to get there for a second consecutive season. They would need to sweep this series in order to accomplish that. Toward the middle, Phillips to his right, jumping throw. Got him at first. Nice play by the gold lover Brandon Phillips to retire Travis Snyder. Well, you know, it seems like you get a little highlight film from Brandon Phillips every night. I mean, we get so used to seeing this that, and I think the opposition does too, that about halfway down the baseline, the guy that hit it, Travis Snyder, slowed up and said, I'm out. He wasn't going to beat it out anyway, and that's just a remarkable play. Another one in the long line of the ones that Brandon Phillips have given Reds fans this year. The batter now will be Andrew McCutcheon. They have two players that are vying for the top spot in the National League in batting average. One let off this game in Josh Harrison, who comes in leading the league. And then there's this guy, McCutcheon, who comes in third at 314. This guy loves to hit here. He loves to hit against the Reds. I mean, he has damaged the Reds probably more than anybody in the National League over the last few years. And really, it's been a couple of years, but the Reds haven't used him as a pincushion like some other teams have as far as drilling McCutcheon. Anytime there seems to be a beanball war, McCutcheon is the guy on the Pirates that gets it somewhere in the ribs. McCutcheon this year in this ballpark hitting 440 with three home runs. In the shallow center and out goes Phillips to make the catch and the inning is over. So one two three to go the Pirates against Leak the top of the first.
manager of the Cincinnati Reds. He'll put up a lineup that looks like this tonight. Brought to you by Meyer. Negron leads off, then Brian Pena, then Brandon Phillips. Jay Bruce in the cleanup spot. Chris Heisey getting the start in center with Billy Hamilton out again. Yorman Rodriguez out in left. Zach Cozart seventh and short. Tucker Barnhart for the second game in a row does the catching. Mike Leak the pitching, and he'll bat ninth against this right-hander Vance Worley. Well, they did not think that Vance Worley would be such an important part of this ball club when they signed him. They got him in a deal for Minnesota back in March. And he spent a lot of time in extended spring training before he finally went to Triple A. Pitched well there. They bring him up. He's had 16 starts, an eight and four record, and an earned run average under three. So that has pretty good results and return on a guy that they probably didn't expect that much from. He's pitching another big game tonight as they head down the stretch here. Last three games, trying to secure maybe the division title. He's got that on his mind, I'm sure. He's made one start against the Reds this year. That was a Pirates 3 2 win on the 30th of August in Pittsburgh, and he allowed two runs, one earned, only three hits in six and a third. And as Chris mentioned earlier, he comes off a very fine performance his last time out against the Brewers in Pittsburgh of eight innings worth of no run, four hit baseball. He gets Christopher Negron to lead it off. Negron in the number one spot in the Reds batting order for only the third time this year. Comes in at 235 and only three hits in his last 21 ABs. Negron, then Pena, then Brandon Phillips. Game number 160. 160th game tonight. Reds at 74 and 85. The best they can finish would be eight under at 77 and 85 if they could sweep this series. These two teams, of course, that got together here in Cincinnati for the final three games of the 2013 season with the Reds needing a victory to secure the home wild card spot. They were unable to get it done. The Pirates swept. You know the rest of that story. Bit of a different look for this Pirates lineup tonight. Uh, they have uh, Travis Snyder playing right field. Right field really been kind of a revolving door for them this year. They kind of thought they'd find their guy, Chris, and Gregory Polanco. At well, one point. he was the young player to come out of the major leagues that we've been hearing about for years. I mean, a can't miss type prospect that ended up missing after he was up here a little bit and the league figured him out. I think in the long run he'll be fine, but right now they need to win ball games and it's not about developing young talent. Down the right field line and Gabby Sanchez chases it, but it's out of play. Sanchez getting the start tonight. Despite a right hander going in Mike Leake, he has been by and large platooning with Ike Davis, but Ike Davis a little under the weather. So Gabby Sanchez gets the start at first base. Umpire in your uh, shot there is Corey Blazer. He's calling the balls and strikes. There's Corey. Toward Mercer. He makes the play, and the groan hustling down the line is out 6 3. That's where the Reds' first inning gets started. Take a look at the Pirates defensively behind Worley. Brought to you by your four dealers. Marte in left, McCutcheon in center, Snyder in right. Harrison, the Cincinnati native at third. There's Jordy Mercer at short. Neil Walker at second. Gabby Sanchez at first. Russell Martin catches Vance Worley. Josh Harrison, of course, is uh, right now the leading hitter in the league. And if you ask Andrew McCutcheon who the MVP of the league is this year, he'll point to that man. I think a lot of people in Pittsburgh would probably agree with you. And I'm sure there are a few people here in Cincinnati who would definitely agree with you. Of course, Josh Harrison from Cincinnati went to Princeton High School, then went on to University of Cincinnati. Great for Brian Cleary there. When a year of the pitcher, he has had a tremendous 
offensive year, leading the league at 319. He has a hit in 24 of his last 26 games. You talk about the year of the pitcher. You look at the top 10 in the league and hitting. There are four hitters in the top 10 under 300. And it's been definitely the year of the pitcher, even in a small ballpark like Cincinnati. I guess nobody's proven that better than the Reds. Toward left center field. That will be handled by Marte. And there are two out. The Pirates go in order in their first. Now Vance Worley trying to do the same to Cincinnati. Worley, by the way, celebrated a birthday yesterday, he turned 27. When the Pirates were down uh, in Atlanta, winning 10 to 1. Well, you talked about how well they have played down the stretch. It's really the polar opposite of, unfortunately, what this Reds team has done. But 16 wins in their last 20 games. Well, that's getting it done when you have to. And I really love what Clint Hurdle has done with this team and the way he describes it. He says, you know, going down the stretch, we don't try to go for a second gear. We just show up ready to play every inning of every game. And that's about all you can do. I mean, well, I think what he's done with this ball club over the last few years is just phenomenal. Well, they go 21 years without. Uh, a record that finishes above 500. They go 21 years without being in the postseason. They make it last year, winning in the wild card game of the Reds, and they lose in a five game series of the Cardinals, three games to two. They're trying to win their first division title since 1992. Phillips swinging a hot bat lines this ball into left field. Bobbled momentarily out there by Marte, but. Phillips will settle for a single. He had a home run yesterday, his first since coming back off the DL. You know, Brandon probably came off the DL way too early. He missed 33 games. He probably should have missed 45 games. You know, just with his the thumb injury, the subsequent surgery that he had, the rehab you have to do beyond that. But he knew the ball club needed him. He wasn't swinging the bat well at all when he first came back. Told me it was painful for him to do that. But you can really see the difference here the last few days. I mean, he's got some snapping out swing. Throwing the bat head like he hasn't done since the beginning of the year. So the first base runner of this game is Brandon Phillips. He leads away at first. Sanchez holds him there as Bruce has been hitting the ball hard lately. Hits this one hard. Unfortunately, right at the first base bag. Sanchez makes the play, and the Reds are finished in number one. Is new sports network Fox Sports One is your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series, and it all begins next Friday. No score after one here in Cincinnati. The Reds get a hit off the bat of Phillips in their half for the first. Mike Leak, who had a one-two-three first inning, getting Harrison, Snyder, and McCutcheon goes to work now in the middle part of this Pirates order. Neil Walker, Russell Martin, Starling Marte.
Switch hitter will bat from the left side. Walker is at 270 with 22 home runs on the year. 22 home runs marks a Pittsburgh Pirates team record for home runs by a middle infielder, either a shortstop or a second baseman. 22 homers, 20 of them from this side of the plate, the left side, only two from the right side, one of those two against the Reds. Ahead of him here, one ball and two strikes. Lord Heisey in center on a one two pitch. Chris will haul that in. And Walker is the first out of the second. Take a look at tonight's storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Red Gold Glove candidates. Let's see who we're looking at here. Well, here what you're looking at is really simply fielding percentage and errors. Nowadays, you judge the defense with many more different ideas like zone rating and different types of defensive metrics but you know those guys right there based on the number of errors they made how many times they played in ball games this year certainly make a very strong case for three gold gloves going the Reds way this year I would vote every one of them a gold glove. Let me ask you this now would you also put even though he's had to play a lot of first base in the second half Todd Frazier in that group well, he's come so far absolutely yes I mean a lot of people may not remember Todd Frazier when he first broke in the major leagues you know when he first drafted out of Rutgers he was a, uh, a shortstop and a good one but they didn't think that he was going to be able to play short in the major leagues a long time so they moved him to third base and it was a little rough I think he worked with Scott Rowland learned a lot about the fundamentals worked a lot with all the coaches throughout the years Freddie Benavides this year and he's gotten better Better and better and better just goes to show you you're not born a good fielder you're made a good fielder by practicing and practicing it the right way Benavides teaches it about as well as anybody and I think Todd Frazier certainly should have some consideration of a gold glove now there's some really good gold glovers in this league Bowen Arenado in Colorado comes to mind uh, really at the top of the list but Todd Frazier is right there with him. Just taking a look at Frazier, there he is in the dugout. He does not look like he likes being in that spot in the dugout. I mean, he's not you in the line. Rather, rather than on the field or Correct. in a different spot. Correct. Yeah. And uh, we don't think he's he's hurt. Uh, Brian Price said he's getting the night off tonight, but figures to be back in there tomorrow. But uh, just by the look of him, you think, you know what? I need to be out there, not in here. That guy behind him is trying to pass a message on to somebody. It looks like. <laughs> that our man Dickie Moss down there. <laughs> There's Dickie. He might be better off making a sign. No. no hiding where he is tonight. Well, Dickie Moss, if you don't know, has been with us and, and our audio part of our production for so many, many years. I mean, he predates. Uh, Fox Sports predates Sports Channel. He was back in the days of Jesse Jackson and Channel 5, and even before that, he was an engineer, I think, with WOW Radio. So he has had probably more games, Reds games, uh, at home in Cincinnati than maybe anybody in this stadium. Hard working guy, that's for sure, Dickie Moss. I think he finally got the message with Jim Day. Now, Jim sometimes ignores him, which I don't think is quite right, but. I think he wouldn't allow that to happen very long. That is untrue, Chris Welsh. Dickie Moss is my man. If anyone has anything bad to say about Dickie Moss, they got to go through me. I hear you. He gets you on the air, doesn't he, Jim? He and does. It's not always easy with a remote microphone the way you are when you're traveling all over. You know. He takes care of me. But somebody needs to do that. Yes. Took 10 pitches for Mike Leake, but he finally gets the ground ball off the bat of Russell Martin. So he set down the first two here in the second. We'll deal now with the left fielder, Starling Marte. What a great job, by the way, Chris, by Jim Day 
on the weather right before the game started. Wasn't that something? Yeah, Tim Hendrick, who usually does the, the weather by himself, hits the home run, a great crack of the bat and everything, and, and, and it's a delight to have him with us uh, all year long. But when Jim Day crashed the stage and took the bat away, and actually, you know, He's got pretty good swing, Jim Day does. With a sports coat on. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering what he could do down at fantasy camp. Not able to dive and stop that ball with Brandon Phillips and Marte. Came in with a 10 game hitting streak. Now makes it 11 with that base hit. Uh, you mem may remember that Marte was their leadoff hitter for a good bulk of the year, at least the first part of the year. They thought that even though he doesn't take a lot of pitches or walk a lot they thought that he would hit enough and he has enough stolen base potential to to get some things going at the top of the lineup. They have since replaced him moved him down but he is one of the hottest Pirates hitters right now. Is that uh, or was that an invitation for Jim Day to join the uh, join the crowd at fantasy camp. 2015. Well I mean he's welcome to do that. I have no uh, authority to waive the, the fee. But I mean, if you're looking for athletic talent, you don't have to look much farther than that camera well down there. Well, I'll tell you what, he could save a little money by bunking with you if that's okay. I mean, I, I've seen him hit a golf ball opposite field, so I'm sure he could probably do that with a baseball. Of course, his opposite field golf shot, <laughs> not by design, ends up in the parking lot. <laughs> no response from our man down low. On the move from first base Marte look at this throw by Tucker Barnhart and he guns down Marte who leads this team with 29 stolen bases. That's a former minor league gold glove winner right there Tucker Barnhart. I'm Jim Day. Our final two broadcasts of the season tonight and Sunday hasn't been the season the Reds are looking for in the standings but there have been some good moments along the way. We're going to count them down the top nine moments over the next two broadcasts and we will start with number nine Jay Bruce and the home run robbery August 10th John Carlos Stanton bring it back Jay Bruce part of a 7-2. Reds victory on that day. Then September 11th, Matt Adams, top of the seventh, trying to go yard. And Johnny Cueto says, thank you very much, Jay Bruce. Reds win that game 1-0. So that was a crucial rob of a home run. Jay Bruce, home run robbery here. Number nine moments of the season. We'll be doing that all night long and on Sunday, boys. Look forward to seeing the rest of those. Those are a couple of very nice plays by the Reds right fielder, who in the past really has been a candidate for a gold glove as well. Maybe not so this year, but in the past, we were a little bit shocked that he didn't come out with a gold glove. You're right. 
Heisey getting the start in center field tonight, and he'll line this ball out into left field, snapping an 0 for 13 hole that he had been in. The leadoff man is on. Uh, Chris has been through about 10 different batting stances this year. And you, this time he's holding the bat very high over his head. He gets a high fastball. He's always been good at getting on an inside fastball up in the zone. Although that looked like it was a changeup. And Vance Worley or some kind of a breaking ball. And he hits very hard in the left field. The Reds get their second hit. They get the leadoff man on. And now here's Jorman Rodriguez. Bond has been made of this young man, 22 years old, since he came up in September. He has probably got more playing time, certainly lately, than any of the call ups once the minor league season ended. Again, only 22, spent the year this year at Double A Pensacola, but really got a look in September due to the fact that he hit just under 300 at 291 after the All Star break this year. Hits yesterday. One was a bunt hit. He had his second RBI of the year and a single into right field that came against Giovanni Gallardo yesterday afternoon. He comes in six for 20 at the plate. And he will take strike three, and so on three pitches, Worley chews him up there. Strikeout number one for the right hander. Played Zach Kozart. He sees Zach's numbers on the year 222. Down from what he did a year ago, and particularly in the second half for Kozart. A year ago, he hit upwards of 280 in half number two, but this year he's never really got it going. He ended last year at 254. This year at 222 will be the lowest that he has hit. In his three full years in the big leagues. Double digit home runs each of his first full years prior to this year. 15 and 12. 12 last year but only four home run balls this year. Certainly one of the things that he will it figures want to examine as to why his offense went the way it did. In 2014. It just seems to me that Zach never really got to the point of feeling comfortable with the play. Got off to a very bad start. Even when he hit the ball hard, it was right at somebody. So his batting average was so low the first month of the year that he looked like he had this huge hole to dig out of. And it looked like he was trying to maybe hit the ball the other way a little bit more than he ever has in the past. Uh, and when you lack confidence, you lack bat speed and aggressiveness, and you just don't cut it loose. And you're against a pitcher who's cutting it loose. And you've got to be equally as aggressive as that pitcher. And I'm not so sure Zach really got into that aggressive mode this year. It wasn't all that long ago that we saw him hit what 17 home runs in a year where he I mean was very quick on an inside fastball and that it was dangerous to pitch him inside. Yeah, two years ago he hit 15. 15 is what I mean, yeah. Good home run total for a shortstop. Sure is. I think I think you take that every year, especially oh, yeah. you know where he has to, had to hit in the, in the lineup. He's down around the seven and eight spot nearly all year long, and that's the other part of it is that it, that's a difficult part of the lineup to hit when you're batting right in front of the pitcher. Oftentimes you're pitched around, you know, you're being nibbled at the, at the corners, and you really have to have a lot of patience. Pops this one up and playable for Russell Martin. That's the second out. Reds fans, remember if a Reds home run hits the Toyota sign during tonight's game, Terry Lyons from Cincinnati will win the beautiful Tundra that's on display here at Great American Ballpark. There's only a few games left, so make sure you register for your chance to win by visiting your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. In fact, after tonight, Jim Day was mentioning it only one more broadcast here in Fox Sports Ohio that'll come up Sunday. Calling that of course the Johnny Cueto game because Johnny 
trying to become the first Reds right-hander since 1965 and the first Reds pitcher overall since 88 to win 20 games. And we were remiss, by the way, also we in talking about the last right-hander to win 20 in 65 was Sammy Ellis, who won 22. But that same year, Jim Maloney was a 20-game winner for the Reds. So they had two 20-game winners on the staff in 1965. Yeah, I think really what that shows you is not how lacking the Reds pitching has been, but how difficult it is to get to a 20 win plateau. And when you've got that many years of a gap in between 20 game winners and even more so for right handers, you know, you really appreciate more and more what Johnny Cueto has done this year and he's done with a team that is well below 500. I mean, he would already be way over 20 wins if he had gotten some of the wins that he really deserved. You're talking about a gap of 50 years between right handers winning 20 games. Danny Jackson, the last, he won 23 in 88. Well, the good news for the Reds and Reds fans is that Johnny Cueto and the Reds have an option on him for next year. So it's all pretty much a done deal that he will come back at what is nowadays a reasonable price as far as an elite starting pitcher goes. The bad news is that that option is only for one year. How about that throw that the man at the plate made to end the top of the second Tucker Barnhart. I'm not surprised. I mean Tucker has always been you know defense first throwing out runners one of the best in the league. He was one of the better catchers in the league defensively in the International League when he spent the majority of the year down in Louisville. I'll tell you what if you do that well you can etch yourself out a really nice major league career. Without having to hit a whole bunch. Now, Tucker's a switch hitter. He hasn't really shown in the minor leagues any off the chart numbers in a, offensively in a year or so. But it's it's one of those things where you know guys who throw and catch as well as Tucker Barnard, they don't grow on trees. That ball smoked in the center by Barnhart. It's going to get Heisey over to third, and it's first and third with two out. An opportunity for a good hitting pitcher. In Mike Leak put the Reds in front early in this game. Boy, he waits on this ball extremely well, Tucker Barnhart does. He gets a pitch up and out over the plate, which is nice, but still in all, the idea is not to miss that pitch, foul it off, and he gets it right centered on the sweet spot. You were talking about the good work that he does behind the plate and carving out a career. The guy that was here last year has done just that in Ryan Hannigan. Yeah, you're right about that. Well, about Corky Miller. Corky's the same way, exactly right. That's him out of a large amount of Major League time. Oh, look what I found. Hit the heck out of that ball, did Leak, and Vance Worley with good reaction time caught that line drive to end the inning. Here's another look. Look in your other hand, you got a gold watch.
working with MLB.com's head-to-head -head challenge app. You and your opponent each select four different players, and the person with the most points at the end of each game wins. Head-to-head -head challenge is free to play, so download today. Red American Ballpark on a Friday night, final fireworks Friday of the season. Reds at home this year will finish above 500. They're 42 and 36 here at home going into tonight's game. And they also have the advantage head to head against this Pirates team on the year. 16 times these two teams have met going into tonight. Reds have won 10, lost six against the Pirates. In fact, they've only lost one series against Pittsburgh. And that was the last time these guys got together in late August over in Pittsburgh. Gabby Sanchez leads things off, the number seven hitter in the Pirate lineup. Gabby at 232, six homers. He's driven in 32. There was a time earlier in his career when he wore a Florida Marlins uniform. He was an up and coming power prospect at first base. Yeah, they really thought he was a can't miss superstar. And it just never played out that way for Sanchez, but he. Has been an important part of this ball club that the Pittsburgh Pirates have had this year, and even really be a little bit more important as the season has gone on. Always has a good eye at the plate. One of those players like John Jay. Yonder Alonzo coming out of the University of Miami Hurricane Baseball Program. He is down on strikes, the Pirate first baseman for the first out here in the third. Well, they've been trying to decide what they're going to do over there at first base, not only this year, but into the future. Back-to-back well, -back breaking balls right there. It didn't look like he really saw the last two that, that Mike Leak threw in there. They want to make a little note of that. Here's the shortstop, Jordy Mercer. Same pitch. Phillips down to a knee to make this play. Mercer is retired. And there are two men out. Well, right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, only two games left to chat with Hal using our game day live page. Not only is Homer Bailey missing be, uh, being on the mound, his injury doesn't allow him to pursue his passions off the field as well. Plus, the LeBron era officially begins today in Cleveland. Check out the sights and sounds from Cavs Media Day. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Worley, a couple of hits this year and 31 times to the plate. I mentioned it earlier, a guy who went to camp this year with Minnesota, but purchased by the Pirates from the Twins right there in that last week of March. Pitched at AAA Indianapolis, and then when they had an opportunity at the big league level when Francisco Lariano went on the DL in mid-June. He came up, stepped into the heck of a job for them. Yeah, you, know, you never really know what's going to happen, but a lot of ball clubs will do that at the very end of the spring. They know that there's some teams that have roster spot problems, and they're willing to deal a pitcher here, a pitcher there. And the Pirates probably got him as nothing more than an insurance policy. Put him down in AAA. Maybe we'll need him. Maybe we won't. And he's had a big part of their success going down the line. Having won eight and lost only four for the Pirates in his 16 starts. He draws a walk here from Mike Leak, who walks about one every four innings, a little over two per nine, and he walks the pitcher with two men out. Now he'll deal with the league's leading hitter, Josh Harrison. Harrison has a 13 game hitting streak coming into this game. 
In fact, he's had two 13 game hitting streaks this year, so that ties a career high for him. We talk a lot about guys standing right on top of the plate, but you watch Josh Harrison, he's a long way from the plate up there. Now that tells me he likes the ball away. I mean, because really, in order to get to the outside pitch, you've got to stride towards the plate. It's almost opposite of what you would think. Really, a guy off the plate, you know, he figures, oh, you know, he wants to make sure he doesn't get jammed in there. But I think that, you know, he gets that whole momentum and that movement of him going towards the outer corner. They're going to pitch him in. Turns on this ball, but yanks it foul down the left field line. Yeah. If you're going to go in there, you better go way in. I mean, way in. Well, Barnhart's checking inside, and you see that pitch was inside by several inches. And you know, now that you've got him looking in there, maybe it's time to go away. Something real soft. Make him not only adjust in the location of the pitch, but also in the speed of the pitch. He opens up that stance just a little bit there at the end, also. This is a guy who wasn't even an everyday player at the start of the year. They had Pedro Alvarez over at third base. They actually started the year with Travis Ishikawa at first base. He was playing some right field. He was playing some left field. He took over at third. He took off. This Pirates team took off. They have not been under 500 since May. 16 and 7 in September. And again, start the day only one game behind the Cardinals in the National League Central Division. Well, he was drafted by the Cubs in 2008. Sixth round out of the University of Cincinnati. And then a year later, he got traded by the Cubs to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hit it hard, but right in the groan. And the Pirates are finished in the third. They get a runner, they strand a runner. I'm Jim Day. We're counting down the top nine moments of 2014 for the Cincinnati Reds. We have given you number nine. Coming in at number eight would be a guy, along with Devin Mesoraco, had a breakout season this year. That would be all star third baseman Todd Frazier. Became only the third Reds third baseman. Have 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases in the same season. He's the master of the sneak attack, Steve. And we all know he's got some pop in that bat. 
been probably the most consistent guy on the Reds roster. And guys, he's not playing tonight. You talked about him just really looking like he's dreading it. He's actually been down here in the camera well on this end with me. And I asked him that question. This has to be dreadful for you. He says, I can't stand it. <laughs> he would rather be playing. There's no question about that. But he is Mr. Cheerleader down here in the camera well. Hey, you need an interview, you can just grab Todd right there. He's always uh, able to help you out with a microphone. Negron will lead things off here in the bottom of the third against the right-hander Vance Worley. He's given up three hits. Reds have stranded three. Top of the order again here. It means Negron, Pena, and Phillips. Scoreless here at Great American Ballpark on this Friday night. Solid contact there. Negron only had three hits in his last 21 at bats. Gets himself a base hit here to start the third, so the Reds get the leadoff man on second straight frame. Supportive of his teammates, that's for sure. Todd Frazier. The grown five for five in stolen bases this year. He leads away down there. Russell Martin, a hard one to run on. He's thrown out 35% of would be base dealers. In fact, Pittsburgh pitchers. There goes Negron. He's going to have to hustle back to first base as this catch is made out there by Starling Marte. Pittsburgh pitchers have had 47 would be base dealers thrown out. That's the most in the National League. So they have a good combination of quick time to the plate. And a good catcher back there and throwing in Russell Martin. Uh, so you wouldn't think based on all that information that would be a straight steal. Probably a hit and run. Nobody out. You get the leadoff hitter on. You're trying to take the game to him a little bit. Put a little pressure on. Brian Pena, good contact hitter when he wants to be. Will hit the ball the other way. Just happen to get under that pitch a little bit. But definitely, in my opinion, probably hit and run. Double play ball to short. Mercer, Walker, Sanchez. 6 4 3, and the Reds' double play ball ends their third. Red American Ballpark. They are located near sections 130 and 113. These two stands feature several Christian Moorline craft beer options with 40 bottled beer selections as well. 
Don't miss your chance to taste a Cincinnati tradition while enjoying a Reds baseball. For tickets, 513-381-REDS. Select Kroger locations or reds.com slash tickets. Three scoreless here at GABP on this Friday night. One hit for the Pirates, four for the Reds. Lee gets Travis Snyder, the right fielder, to get it going here in the top of the fourth. Snyder was their opening day uh, right fielder. They've also used Jose Tabata out there. Harrison, we mentioned earlier, played some right field back in uh, May and into June. Gregory Polanco, when he came up in the early days of June, took over in right field. And as we mentioned, they thought he was going to be a can't miss guy, but he didn't hit at the end of his stint so much so that they sent him back down to their uh, AAA club until the recall in September. Snyder's then been the main guy since well, then. Well, you know what? He's got a little pop. He's got 13 home runs. He's only been about half time playing. But he's looking to jerk one out of here now. Although he takes that ball the other way. The groan showing some agility, but then he throws it high and ultimately away and into the camera well. That's going to send Snyder down to second base, and Pittsburgh will have their first runner in scoring position in this game. Well, Snyder kind of hangs in on this ball and slashes it. And after a diving stop by Negron, who's way out of position because you've got the shift on that pull lefty, he just comes up and fires it wide. That's going to be a hit and an error, a hit for Snyder. And then a throwing error on the third baseman, Christopher Negron. Diplomatic call. But I thought the correct one. Now Andrew McCutcheon has a chance to put Pittsburgh in front. Yeah, you mentioned how well McCutcheon has hit the Reds this year in this ballpark batting 440. I mean that is off the charts. You got a base open right here. I know you're in the middle of the lineup. Walker is almost as dangerous in this ballpark. He's popped a lot of home runs here. 12 in his career. McCutcheon's at 14 in his career here. But you still have to be careful right here. Because when it gets right down to the stretch, I mean, your superstars become superstars again. And McCutcheon, make no mistake about it, he is the superstar on this team. Look at the numbers he's put up there, at least the ranks. Extra base hits second, slugging percentage second. And Leak is being very careful right here. In fact, this looks like a good old fashioned pitch around. First and on base percentage this year in the National League, third right now on average. He comes into this game with a 295 number with runners in scoring position. That Cardinal game, which the Pirates will be scoreboard watching, won't start. Until what is it 940 tonight out in Arizona Michael Walker will go for the Cardinals against Trevor Cahill of the Diamondbacks of course the Diamondbacks made news uh, today Chris when they uh, they fired Kirk Gibson and Alan Trammell with three days to go Gibson the manager Trammell the bench coach and then they turned around and asked Alan Trammell oh before you leave would you be kind enough to manage the last three games. And he said yes. Why not? Yeah, he's a class guy. I'll tell you what. You don't find him much better than Alan Trammell anywhere in the game of baseball. And Kirk Gibson, for that matter, I think they'd probably just make a change to make a change out there. Now, Kenny Rosenthal tweeted today that the Diamondbacks had to make a decision on Gibson by a set date at the end of the season or his contract would have extended through 2016. Oh. a good job of coming back by Leak on McCutcheon right there. Yeah, I take that back about the pitch around because that did not seem to be the case at all. In fact, he hangs a breaking ball right there for McCutcheon and kind of an awkward swing for Andrew. You don't see that very often. The same type of swing we saw on a, a pitch earlier. Gabby Sanchez took the same breaking ball for strike three. Well, that Diamondbacks club, which uh, Playing the Cardinals tonight at home 
been in the news a lot as of late. They recently hired the former uh, big league pitcher Dave Stewart, who's been uh, a very successful pitcher in the big leagues, a coach in the big leagues, front Fire office agent. person, agent. Now as their general, as their uh, general manager, hired by Tony La Russa. former teammate of mine. We played together in Texas, Stu and I did. What a high character guy. Well, you talk about a gamer. Woo. Down the right field line and slicing into the seats. How about Tony La Russa hiring Dave Stewart? They used to be uh, on the other side of things from one another. Back when Stewart was a pitcher and La Russa managed in terms of uh, wasn't the World Series that he pitched against them? Now he's actually pitching for uh, Tony La Russa when he was with the Oakland A's. Uh, he, he pitched against Tony's team when Tony was in San Chicago uh, coaching the managing the White, White Sox, Sox okay. he was with the Detroit Tigers. But yeah he was one of the, the main guys and I think that's where Tony and Dave Stewart got so close and that's where to, uh, La Russa really learned how much depth there is to Dave Stewart. And his post playing career has you know you won't find that many guys that have done as many things as Dave Stewart in the game. I mean. Pitched and pitching the World Series the way he has, and then all the other things you mentioned. Coaching the major leagues, been a player agent, has been a front office operative. I mean, he's done just about everything there is, and and that ought to be a very interesting duo that they have in Arizona. To the right of the shortstop, and Cozart, sure-handed as he has been all year, throws out Neil Walker for out number two. I'm now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio fan photo. We have just one broadcast left after today, and that's on Sunday. Make sure you get your pictures in now. The fan photo each game this season brought to you by AT&T. And I got to say, the one that they showed on Wednesday with a cowboy eating the fried chicken was a classic. It was you a classic. That? Yeah, I did. I, he was sporting a pretty good-looking mullet then, too, wasn't he? You know, he, look, he had that devilish look in his eye, like, don't you come near my chicken. Don't wow. you come near my chicken. Well, we know that anyway. I went in to say hi to him today in the radio booth, and he was eating chicken then. They've been left over whenever that picture was taken. He loves his chicken. One strike on Martin. We're going to get another look at that picture here in a moment. It's a classic. Here it is. Look at that look in the eyes yeah. of the cowboy. Well, party in the front, or business in the front, party in the back. Well, Jethro Bodine there from the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> with that napkin. He said, "This is just an appetizer for me." What a gem! I'll tell you what. We have a lot of laughs hanging around the cowboy. Your guy Marty Brennan and his sidekick over there. Yeah. In the dirt and it bounces away. It goes toward the dugout and down the steps it goes. Boy, the Reds catch a break right there because Travis Snyder was one step away from third base when that ball went into the dugout. That ball was such a bad pitch. Martin chases it in the dirt and one of those. Breaking balls, it just takes a wild hop. It looks like it probably went off maybe one of the shin guards. Tucker doesn't know where that ball went. It goes down the steps. It's one base off the rubber. That's the rule, right? One base off the rubber, but if you're already at third base by the time that by the time the ball goes out of play, that's where he is right there. You see, when that ball disappears, he's only a step or two from third base. If he gets to third base and then the ball goes into the dugout. I believe you get home. I may have to be corrected on that, but I think that's the way that, that rule would be. From a record standpoint, it goes down as a strikeout for Leak and a wild pitch on Mike and a runner at first base, Martin, with Snyder at third and two men out for Starling Marte. He had a base at his first time in the center. Extending his hitting streak to 11 and 21 of the last 22. A 
How about a look at our IGS bringing the energy features. Feet, uh, talking about Starling Marte, highest batting average since August the 5th in the big leagues. Marte is second at 363. You talk about a team that's get, gotten hot at the right time. This Pittsburgh team has really done that. Well, you finish strong not only to, to get into the playoffs, but maybe to build a little momentum when you get there. Swing and a miss. He oh. caught him up inside. Good inning. Lee gets the strikeout. Three of them in the inning and four in the game. Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day, and I tell you what, there's a special moment here, Great American tonight. You know that the Reds each and every game salute a military member, but man, did they pull a surprise tonight. This is Chance Van Holly. He is a private first class, correct? Stationed in South Korea. Now his family, or at least his grandmothers and his parents thought that he was due home not until five days. And they put a video message on the board, and then all of a sudden, tell about what happened. I, I, once I saw the video, I just walked down the stairs, and my cousin kept saying, Vicky, turn around, turn around. And next thing you know, my mom finally turned around after she stopped talking, and I have the flowers waiting for her. So. He wasn't supposed to be home. Yes, was not supposed to be home, so the whole family surprise, particularly the grandmothers, had to be a great surprise. Yes, it was. It was great. How about you? I'm fine. I'm really <laughs> overrunning about it. <laughs> Is this mom over here? Oh, mom's over here. I am sorry. And you didn't know it. You've got an army mom shirt on and you didn't know it. That had to be the greatest surprise ever. Well, he surprised us coming home from AIT training and I didn't like it. I told him no more surprises. <laughs> so I was not expecting it. I thought he would listen to me, but he still doesn't. I have to be proud of this guy. Yep. I sure am. Glad he's home. And where are you off to next? Uh, I'm actually headed to Vilsack, Germany. Uh, I leave October 21st, um, so I'm home for a couple couple weeks, and then I leave for Germany in about 25 days. Well, we appreciate your service. you got a great family. Nice to meet all of you. And this is Brother Easton as well. Easton, nice to meet you. Great story out here. Chance Van Holly, we salute all the military members. One of your best, Jim, right there, that's for sure. Thank you. Well, thanks also to the Reds, though. I mean, if it wasn't for Phil Castellini and the Castellini family and how they've embraced the relationship that they've been able to develop between the Reds and the those service members of the armed forces, I mean, moments like that don't happen. And uh, it's just great to see. Really a wonderful, maybe one of the best moments. You know, what we will be reviewing over the next few days, some of the great moments we've seen with the Reds team this year. But I'm not so sure it gets a whole lot better than that right there. The look on their faces was priceless, wasn't it, when he walked down that aisle? That's for certain. I don't know how you concentrate on watching the game now. The chances come home and he's here with them for three and a half weeks or so. Unbelievable. They're going to get Jim Day into the family photo as well. Or maybe he's photobombing. <laughs> Learning from Brandon Phillips. 
Chance here for Harrison on the bare hand pick and throw. And a good stretch on the receiving end by Gabby Sanchez. Well, this kid's doing it all, isn't he? That is a really good play because Heisey can, he's above average runner down the line right here, and he gets a pretty good break out of the box. Harrison's got to get that ball while it's bouncing, barehanded, and fire at the first almost in one motion. So two men out, the batter now will be Orman Rodriguez. Hey, that, you know what? You know how difficult that play is trying at home. How would you try that, though? Well, you'll probably break a window. But, I mean, that is, you know, you get on your driveway and you have, have your kid roll a ball to you. And you see if you can hit the, hit the tree or hit anything. I mean, because that is a very difficult play. He made that look almost routine. Rodriguez, a strikeout victim his first time, hits this one towards center, but it's going to be run down by Andrew McCutcheon. And so Vance Worley has himself his first 1-2-3 inning of this game. Brought to you by the JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. By Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And go for the save on Wing Tuesdays at B-Dubs, especially priced wings all day. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. Mike Leak ready to work here in the top of the fifth inning. Scoreless battle between the Reds and the Pirates. First game of this three game series. A couple of day games to follow as a rip into left center field by Sanchez. Near the wall is Rodriguez and Heisey. Neither of them will get it. Gabby Sanchez, seventh home run of the year, has put the Pirates in front here in the fifth inning. Well, he got loaded on a fastball right there, and I'm really quite surprised that he got a first pitch fastball to hit. I mean, he just gets all over this pitch. Look at the follow through right there. I mean, the way Mike Leak made him look so bad his first time up on breaking balls. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised you come back there and you try to try to sneak a fastball by him. Ripped to third and knocked down by Negron. And he'll make the play to retire Jordy Mercer. You know, if, if, if you go back to the third inning when Gabby Sanchez came up, here's a breaking ball, and here's the swing that he takes on a breaking ball. Very awkward looking. He eventually struck out in the next pitch on that breaking ball, and here's the fastball. And it could be location, but I mean, if you if you get a guy looking bad, I think you make him make the adjustment before you make the adjustment. I think Michael probably say, well, you know, I, I didn't mean to throw the ball up around the letters on the inner part of the plate. And that's probably has a lot to do with it. The home run ball, a ground out, both hit hard, and now it's Worley who walked his first time. 
Gabby Sanchez wouldn't normally play on a night like tonight, Chris, with a right-hander on the mound, but he makes it pay off. Mike Davis a little under the weather. Sanchez takes advantage. Top of the order featuring Josh Harrison waiting on deck. Swing and a miss. They're going to put a tag or a throw. They'll throw on to first. A strikeout throw out. 2 3. And the second out of the inning is the fifth strikeout for Mike Lee. The Pirates, of course, hope they can win here tonight and then watch that Cardinal game later against the Diamondbacks. And if the Diamondbacks can come up with a win out there and the Pirates win here, those two teams would be dead even at 88 and 72 atop the National League Central with two games remaining. I told you Michael Waka will throw for the Cardinals tonight. Made one start, a pretty good one earlier this year against the Diamondbacks. River Cahill has never defeated the Cardinals in four career starts against them. That game starts at what 9:40, I believe, tonight, out in the desert. Gets ahead two strikes here. You got a preference as to who should win to the division? I mean, that's probably unfair to ask you because you've been a closet Cardinals guy your whole life. See, I knew that was coming. I, somehow I knew that was coming oh. from you. You've been waiting to say that and, and amongst other things all night now. Ever here's since Wilson you disparaged the television here side yesterday when you were working with Marty on the radio, you know, you never know who's listening. You know, you've got to go along. When, when somebody says what they said, like Marty, the Hall of Famer, you just nod your head and agree. Well, you jumped in with both feet when he called the TV side the dark side. You were right there cheering him right on. <laughs> and here you are over here making a living tonight. I, I think you may have misheard. It's probably what happened. I may have, but the uh, the guys that I met later on that evening uh, didn't. They all we we're all listening independently. What you think you heard was not what you heard. How about that? <laughs> Roundabout way of saying I don't think so. The breakout year for Devin Mazzarocco. I'm Jim Day. We're counting down the top nine moments for the Reds in 2014. Number seven, Devin Mazzarocco. Not one, Granny. Not two, but three grand slams this season. Ties the Reds record with those three grannies. Tying Frank Robinson, Lee May, Ray Knight, Eric Davis, and Chris Sago. He leads the league. And four run round trippers this season. I got to tell you what, the most memorable part 
was when he hit for the cycle, when he hit home runs in four straight games. The first one was a solo shot, sec next game a two-run shot, next game a three-run shot, and then the next game a grand slam, if you will, a home run cycle. What a season he's had, boys. Yeah, we mentioned that he is uh, not playing tonight, didn't play yesterday, has a bit of an intercostal strain. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with intercostal, Mr. Welsh, can you explain that? Nope. Intercostal means nothing to you. You're the former player. I, I, I never had one of those. We turn to you for your expertise. I would imagine it's probably something to do with a muscle. Well, that we had figured out since they called it an intercostal muscle. You don't know where it is. No. Trying to go to second on that was Zach Cozart, and he is gunned down. 6-4 in the put out. The tag applied by Walker. You never had an intercostal muscle strain then, I guess. And he hits it hard. No, I have not. And I don't know. Would, would you enlighten me? Or maybe, maybe I have had one. I just called it like a rib muscle or something. That may be it. I don't know. That's why I asked you. I thought you would be the expert. Having hung around Brantley a lot, who knows all the muscles and the uh, various injuries. Well, I have to admit to you that I do not play doctor, not even on TV. <laughs> not even on TV, like he does. Okay. How about three pitches and two out here in the bottom of the fifth inning? Kozar was credited with a single in the left and an out 6 4. And Barnard flies out to center. A legal bat with two men out and the base is empty. Josh Hall, the producer, says it's a group of muscles that run between the ribs. That would be. How about that one? Ripped down the left field line by Leak on only the fourth pitch of the inning by Vance Worley. Leak will get himself a two base hit. He has five doubles this year. Todd Frazier, happy about it indeed. Mike Leak, you know, since he's come into the league, he has really been the best hitter of all pitchers from a standpoint of the most number of hits. He may not have the most number of home runs, but that gives him 69 career hits. That's the most of any player since he debuted in 2010. Fortunately, he did it with nobody on base. And with two outs, but he does represent the tying run. Negrona, who hit one hard in the left field his last time. He does that again here. Leak may try to score to tie this thing. Pirates get a run in the top of the fifth on a home run, leading it off by Gabby Sanchez. Reds had two on, two out in the second. Leadoff man on in the third. Had two hits in this inning. Now a runner at second base here. Reds this year, 245 with runners in scoring position. That's ninth in the league. Pittsburgh just a little bit better, seventh in the league, but in the second half, they have been much better, just like their starting pitching and their relief pitching has been much better in the second half of the year than it was the first half. Hit hard to center field. Down for a hit from the ground. Here comes the runner leak. McCutcheon's throw. Not in time. Game tied. Down to second on the throw. Home goes the ground. Now McCutcheon bobbled that ball, it seemed like, ever so slightly. Well, Mike Leak ran right through a stop sign at third base that was thrown up there by Steve Smith. And he was simply not going to be denied. He's giving up a run. He figures this may be the only chance I get to get to tie this ball game up. Mike, you see that the Smith puts the stop sign up. Lee goes barreling right on through and just ahead of the throw and the tag. And the Reds put a run on the board. There's the, the momentary bobble by McCutcheon. And that was probably the difference. 
Malik foot. gets in there with his right foot. Biggest cheerleader of them all down in that Reds dugout, happy about it. Now it's Pena. New game at 1 1. Mike Leake scores it. Three hits in the inning for the Reds. DeGrom picks up his 15th run batted in. He yeah, that's the kind of on play. The yeah. That is the kind of play right there that the new not allowed to block home plate rule may have affected the outcome of that play. Because if you're Russell Martin, you know, you're a strong, stout guy. You're going to hunker down over the plate. You're going to get your knee over there in front of home plate, and you are probably not going to let Mike Leake get in there with a slide. And he would probably have been out, even though he would have caught the ball after Leake would have gotten to the plate. Because Leake probably wouldn't have tried to barrel him over. I would have been surprised if that happened. So, but he's got to be positioned in front of home plate, you see right there. So he gives Leake plenty of room to, to get to the plate as is prescribed by that rule. And that's just another example of how that rule has changed some of the plays at home. And I think that's probably one of them. Pena with an opportunity here to give the Reds their first lead here tonight. Leaks two out double, then the grown single. He moves to second on the throw home. He represents the go ahead run, does Christopher Negron. And he had a pitch at double the other night for the Reds on Tuesday against Milwaukee. RBI single ties this game through five or even at one. Of Reds baseball. The only chance you'll have to watch the Reds and the Pirates tomorrow is on Fox Sports 1. That's at 1 p.m. Eastern and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. It'll be the left hander, Francisco Liriano, uh, against 15 game winner Alfredo Simon, who's bounced back pretty well here as of late, gunning for his 16th win on his final start of the year. Again, that's tomorrow, Fox Sports 1, 1 o'clock, Reds and the Pirates. You know, Pirates had a figure when they came in here for this series. I mean, you're facing Mike Leake on Friday, Alfredo Simon, 15 game winner on Saturday, and then Johnny Cueto going for number 20 on 
Sunday to finish the season off. And these games are somewhat must win. They're in the playoffs, at least a play in game. But, you know, what we're going to determine now is that maybe they win the division. Maybe they're in the play in game and they can play at home instead of going all the way to San Francisco and play that play in game. Remember the atmosphere in Pittsburgh last sure. year? That one game, I mean, it was just intense. And I think that they'd love to recreate that same atmosphere again this year and host the Giants if they did not win the division. Well, certainly puts the pressure on the Cardinals if they are able to win here tonight, the Pirates, and then they can sit back and watch, knowing that if the Cardinals lose, they are dead even with two games to go. Here's what we're talking about playoff picture in terms of the National League. Washington has clinched. The Dodgers have clinched. The Cardinals are one game up on the Pirates. In the wild card, the Pirates lead the Giants by one game, again, with three to go in terms of the wild card race. San Francisco won yesterday, and they're playing San Diego to close things up. But they're playing in San Francisco. When Correct. the Giants went to San Diego, I think it was last week, they didn't do too well. So you got to wonder if you're the Pirates. I mean, this is the second city of a two city trip. You went to Atlanta. Now you're coming through Cincinnati to end the season. You know you're going somewhere, but you don't know where to go. The question is, how do you pack? Nice do you pick, pick on the old lay by Brandon Phillips in the out at first on Andrew McCutcheon. Well, we've already seen Brandon Phillips go to his right. This time he goes to his left. And he robs Andrew McCutcheon. Remember, McCutcheon is right there in the thick of things as far as winning the batting title this year. A play like that right there might cost him the batting title. You never know. Well, you got two of them at the top of the uh, order for the Pirates. Two of them at the right near the top of the top 10 in the league and hitting in the National League are Pirates. 319 Harrison, 314 McCutcheon, numbers one and three. You look back at Pirate history, the last Pirate to win the National League batting title is Freddie Sanchez. He can hit. When he hit 344 back in 2006. Former Red, then a Pirate, Dave Parker, won back to back batting titles with Pittsburgh in 77 and 78. Bill Madlock won a couple of them in the early 80s. Harrison and McCutcheon vying for it this year. You know, we're not going to do it with two out, but I would love to talk to Jim Day about, I know because I know he's probably talked to somebody from the Pirates, about how you would pack for a, a road trip that potentially would take you all over the map and not really knowing where you're going to go. You could you know, potentially go here, San Francisco, and then wherever else, right? Yeah, and Jim will. Hopefully be able to figure that out and fill us in next inning when we come back to him on that because you know you go to San Francisco obviously this time of year you're going to take some warm weather clothes. Mm -hmm. You know you could end up if you keep playing you could end up in Washington you could end up in St. Louis depending on the play in game. Nice backhand pick by Pena on that ball hit hard by Neil Walker and the first time since the first inning the Pirates go in order.
streaming sports service is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Reds.com for details. I'm Jim Day. All right, let's explain the dilemma that the Pittsburgh Pirates, if you want to call it that, it's a good problem to have that they've had. They just came from Atlanta on a four-game series. So, literally, they had to pack with many, many variables in mind. First, you're going to Atlanta. You not know what you're going to get there. It's actually cooler than they thought. Then it's off to Cincinnati in September. Never know what you're going to get there. They brought some warm clothes just in case. Now, this is where it gets dicey because they have qualified for the playoffs. They're at least a wild card team. But they're only a game behind the Cardinals. So, if there's a one-game playoff, on Monday, they would have to play in St. Louis. If that doesn't happen, they're a wild card team. They would have to go to San Francisco. And let's go back to the one game playoff. It's say they win that one game playoff. They don't know where they're going after that. If they lose the one game playoff, then they become the wild card team. Then they got to go to San Francisco if you're following me. If they would win that wild card game, they would face the number one seed. But when they left Pittsburgh for Atlanta, they had no idea who that was going to be. It turns out it looked like it's going to be Washington. So literally, they had to pack two weeks worth of clothes for like five or six different cities, all with different climates, not knowing when, where they're going. But again, a good problem to have. That's mind boggling just to try to follow what you were just saying. If Jeff Brantley was on that trip, he'd need four suitcases. You know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the promotions that they would have in the minor leagues where they'd have the fans bring their suitcases to the ballpark. Just in case you win the and, trip. And then you win a trip, but you're not sure where the trip is. And they draw your, you know, they draw your ticket number or something. You go out in the field and then they drop an envelope on you and it tells you where you're going to go. And you leave right there from the ballpark. But of course, it's a lot better trip when you're going into the postseason like the Pirates are. I bet they each have two suitcases. You'd have to, wouldn't you? Well, well the Cowboy takes two suitcases on an overnight. <laughs> on a three-gamer to Pittsburgh. Because you never know what you may need. That's his theory. A little check swing right there against Vance. Morley, a strikeout from Brandon Phillips. He's not so sure he went, but it was a foul, foul tip. Corey Blazer saw that. Jimmy, you've got something else. Hey, boys, left out one little part. On Sunday, if the Pirates are still one game back and they win, let's say, Sunday against the Reds, the Cardinals are in Arizona. They don't play till 415 Eastern. So if that scenario happens, they have to sit here in Cincinnati, either on the tarmac or here at the ballpark, not knowing where they're going again literally sitting after the game are we going to st louis for a one game playoff are we going clear west to san francisco it might come down to that where they have to wait for that game maybe you could set them up at uh, one of your favorite restaurants around town and host them there and uh, entertain them until they decide where they're going they're the enemy i can't do that you are so loyal thank you good trade of yours jim day Bruce strikes out, same thing that Phillips did, so four of them now in the game for Vance Worley. Take a look at tonight's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. There's James, it almost looks like a split, a split screen shot right there. James, thank you for your photo. We'll have one more fan photo of the game coming up on Sunday. He hit the ball hard his first time into left, and then a sparkling defensive play by Heise, by uh, Harrison to retire Heisey back in the fourth. Each team produced a run in the fifth. Pittsburgh on a home run by Gabby Sanchez, his seventh. Reds on an RBI single by Negron, driving home Mike Leak from second. Now Heisey in the hole one and two. Way out 
for Walker. McCutcheon has a tip off his glove. Heisey hustling all the way. He's going to end up at second base. That's a go-ahead run with two men out. It's going to be a double for Chris Heisey. His 15th of the year. Well, Chris Heisey hustling all the way as he normally does, and he legs that into two. It looked like McCutcheon at the last minute got distracted by the second baseman, Walker, who was going out there. McCutcheon's coming hard, but you can see him kind of take his eye off the off the ball for a moment and try to pick up where Walker is. And it just glances off his glove. So a chance for Yorman Rodriguez. Well, he has struck out and flied out. He's 0 for 2 in this game. A couple of RBIs for him here since coming up. in 40 in 119 games at double A Pensacola this year. Yeah, one of two players really that the Reds pulled right out of double A. The other was Daniel Corsino, the pitcher. Not very often you see a hitter come up and skip a full level of minor league ball. Martin can't find it. The ball skips away left. And Heisey ends up a third on a wild pitch by Worley. Chris, interested in your thoughts on the left-hander yesterday, David Holmberg, who after making two terrible starts earlier this year, there weren't many folks that were high on him. He really bounced back this last three times out. Well, the danger of number one, too short of a sample size, and you rush to judgment. And the other thing, it seems like when Holmberg, if he can get out of the first inning, he's going to give you a little bit of a pretty good run. He's had trouble when he has had problems early in the ballgame. And it just goes to show you, I mean, he's not an overpowering pitcher, but he's got good control of his breaking stuff. He has a feel for changing speeds. It's been a long time since the Reds have had, other than Tony Singrani, a left-hander in the rotation. I imagine that if there is a spot in the rotation open, depending on what the Reds do this year with the existing pitchers they have, I mean, he will be right in the mix. Brian Price said he's probably their number six guy right now. That doesn't do you much good, though, does it? No, it doesn't, but it, it reiterates really what you said. If something were to occur, he is right there on the edge. And then you talked about his changeup. It's been his best pitch. And probably will continue to be his best pitch. Toward Mercer. And he will throw out Rodriguez. And so Heisey stranded at third. Reds leave their fifth through six. We are even at one. Fan Appreciation Day is presented by Walgreens. A lot of chances to win prizes throughout that final game. If you'd like tickets, you can call 513-381-RED. You can also go to select Kroger locations or you can go to reds.com slash tickets. Get on out here for Fan Appreciation Day presented by Walgreens. 
Sunday, final day of the 2014 regular season. Hey, well, weather-wise, going to be sensational on Sunday. No Bengals game. They got a bye week. Right. So, no reason to stay at home. Well, it's really been like this the whole homestand. And Johnny Cueto on the mound looking for win number 20. That's a, those are compelling reasons to get out here to the ballpark. Yeah, and the National League Central Division title and the wild card home team could be could be on the line on Sunday. We only wish of course that the uh, the home team the Red Legs were involved in that. 14 not the year for the team in white. Here tonight. You know it won't be that long until things kick up again in Goodyear. Middle of February or so. First spring training game right around the early days of March. And of course the season opener. Next year on August the rather on the April the 6th against this pirate team. Pittsburgh will be here the 6th the 8th and the 9th to start. The 2015 season. I got to ask you a question, Jim Kelch. Do you take selfies like that guy we just were taking a look at there in the stands? I do not. Do you? No, I haven't. But I wonder what he's trying to convey on that one. Are you sure you don't take him? I'm positive I don't take him. <laughs> I think Tom Brenneman does. <laughs> now he's going for a personality portrait. Mm -hmm. Make sure you stay with us after the game. Fox Ohio will break it down as always. Talk with Brian Price, the skipper of the Reds. Reds Light post game is brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. We'll have our crew here tonight with you. Jim Day, Jeff Pecoro, Brian Giesenslaw. Martin's going to be pinch run for here for the Pirates. Chase Darno will run for him at first base. I wonder if he may have injured himself. Darno will run for Martin just by his reaction. It looks like something happened to him physically. They have a couple of other catchers Chris Stewart, Tony Sanchez. Let's see who will enter. Darno takes over at first. Russell Martin walks to start the seventh. Uh, you know what? That's ball four, but he's not happy about it. It looks like that might be an intercostal strain. About playing a doctor on TV. Yeah, you did. Here, here, I thought you never ever lied. So now I don't know what to believe coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Marte has a hit tonight. He has struck out tonight. Told that Martin did leave a game a couple of days ago down in Atlanta with a tight left hamstring. And again, that's just uh, what happened down there. We don't know that that's the same thing here, but if and when we get a report from the Pirate Clubhouse, we'll pass it along. Chasing on a 1 2 pitch. Good breaking ball by Leak. And a strikeout of Starling Marte for the second time tonight. Well, he's got seven punch outs, Leak does, and he has gotten Marte on that breaking ball. He's got a really good slider or curveball, whatever that is, a mix there for, for Mike Leak. That looks more like a slider type. He's been excellent tonight when getting ahead of the hitters and just kind of expanding the zone and getting them to chase, especially those hitters like Marte who will chase. If you give him a reason.
Gabby Sanchez responsible for the only pirate run of this game on the home run in the left center field that went just to the left of the red bullpen area. I'm not so sure he should be looking for fastball here in this at bat. Doesn't get one there. It's ball one. I mean, not to say you're going to throw breaking ball after breaking ball over and over again to the same hitter. You got to mix them up a little bit. But he hit a fastball for a home run his second time up, and he struck out on a variety of breaking balls first time up. Runner on the move. This ball sliced into right center field. The Rodriguez. Pardon me, Heisey will get there and make the catch. Two out. Well, this October, history will be made as baseball's postseason moves to America's new sports network, Fox Sports One, as your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series. And it all begins next Friday, one week from today. No running again. Here's the throw. Dead on. Phillips had that ball waiting for Chase Darno at second base. When are they going to learn? I mean, that was an absolutely perfect throw from Tucker Barnhart. Pirates on Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day. We're counting down the top nine moments of 2014, and let's bring in number six. And that would be Billy Hamilton setting a rookie record. We knew this guy was electrifying on the bases, but could he play a full season and put up the numbers? Indeed, he did. 56 steals in the season was the rookie record, and counting at that point. Breaks Bob Besher's record of 54 set back in 1909. Billy's still coming back from a concussion and uh, going to be interesting to see what happens with the National League Rookie of the Year. Going to be a very, very close vote as Mr. DeGrome has really come on for the Mets. Well, of course, you'd love to see uh, Billy win that award. There hasn't been uh, a Reds player that has won that from an everyday standpoint since Chris Sabo did it many years ago. You would have bet the ranch at the, the All Star break that, that he was going to be the guy, but the second half of the year has not been friendly to Billy Hamilton. He's at just over 200, down in the 130 range in the month of September. Been a good year to watch him, and you really look forward to the future with Billy Hamilton in center field for the Reds. Lead off man out. The batter now will be 
Tucker Barnhart. We have seen two tremendous throws from this guy, Barnhart, tonight. Uh, we've talked about his reputation for throwing runners out. What impresses me is how overhand those throws are. He gets a lot on them. But when you throw a straight overhand the way Tucker Barnhart does right here, there is very little drift or movement on that ball. It holds true all the way, and it has good backspin on it. So it's not going to curve one way or another or slide or cut, but it's also going to carry better. And both of the throws that he's been asked to do have been right on the money, and he simply shut down the running game. I'm not so sure the Pirates are going to try that again. Well, they may have thought with Mezzarocco out of there, let, let's test this guy. Well, maybe they thought because Mike Leake has been, of all the pitchers on the staff, you wouldn't think this, but Mike Leake has been one of the easiest ones to run on. He's yeah. given up 12 stolen bases this year. Before tonight, they have only thrown out two all year long. And tonight, they've thrown two out of two. Now, Tucker Barnhart, speaking of twos, gets his second hit of the night. So he's thrown out two runners. He has two hits. He's two for three. And there's the go ahead run aboard in the bottom of the seventh. Well, they got a fastball, hit it through the middle the first time. That time, a breaking ball down and in. And making it look easy tonight, Tucker is. Mike Leake finished after seven innings of one run three hit baseball. You always like to make that last one of the year a good one and he did it tonight. Well, he really did. He bounced back after three. Yeah, not so great stars. Three of the last four or five have not been all that good. He did come up a pretty good outing. A couple starts ago but Mike Leake uh, has got a lot to be proud of for this year. More innings than he's ever pitched before. A guy that has become very dependable for the Reds to call on. You don't really worry about injury with Mike Leake. He fields his position. He hits well. They want the guy's going to win a lot of games. And after only 26 years old, he made start number 142 tonight. So he's got a lot of baseball left in him. Well, the Reds announced Frazier as a pinch hitter. Out of the dugout, Clint Hurdle. The Pirates will make a pitching change. This is tonight's Skyline Chili. Call to the bull. bottom of the seventh that they are able to do so he would be in line to get a victory he's 11 and 13 going into tonight Todd Frazier showed him cheering on his teammates in the dugout on the bench earlier he gets the chance to pinch it here against Jared Hughes what a year he's having 61 games at 2.01 ERA. Yeah, it makes you really wonder. And I'm not second guessing Brian Price in his move. It makes all the sense in the world. Leak's got 106 pitches. He's probably at the end of the string anyway. 
But in his two at bats against the starter Vance Warner, he could a line drive right back at Warner, who barely got his glove up in time to glove it and make it out. Then he ripped a double down the left field line. So you're looking at a matchup of Leak versus Warley because I doubt that they would bring in a pitcher out of the bullpen to pitch to Mike Leak. Or you bring a specialist in like Jared Hughes having a great year in against Todd Frazier. Of course, it's a chance here, though. The rest think that they've got a chance to, to do something in this inning. I mean, you would never say that maybe about any other pitcher, maybe in the entire league. But you would again about Mike Lee. That's how well he swings the bat. Well, he just does stay alive there with that foul ball. Hughes is a big guy. I mean, 6'7, 245. I mean, he's a, a guy that would fit in pretty well with the Reds bullpen out there when they had guys like Broxton and Andrusik. Chase that one shoulder high and it'll strike out victim second out of the inning. Yeah, they mixed it up pretty good. He had Todd looking down and away on that last pitch and then goes right up the ladder with a four seamer. So now it's Negron representing the top of the order. It was his hit in the fifth. The leak out at second and two out that produced the Reds' first run. Now with Barnhart at first and two out, trying to keep this inning alive. Pedro Villarreal throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. To the watch for live Mac Jenkins. League seven innings, one run, three hits, a couple of walks, eight strikeouts, a wild pitch, a home run ball, and an opportunity to win this game if the Reds can come up with a run here. Christopher Negron, despite he's in his first year in the big leagues with an opportunity to play, he's been around a long time in the minor leagues. He just hustled that thing down the line and beat it out. Well, what really helps Christopher Negron here is that it's kind of a half swing. So he doesn't get out of balance at all at the end of that swing. He's like out of the box, almost like it's a butt. And he barely beats it out. Since Barnhart is a go ahead run down to second base, he gives Pena the opportunity here against Jared Hughes. Pena's had really three kind of lazy at bats where he's hit fly balls into the outfield each time. Due to center one here. Wow. That base hit now the 10th. Of this game by the Reds are double figures despite only producing one run. Need a big hit here from Pena in the seventh.
line this year hitting 244 with the runners in scoring position his RBI total at 26. If there's been a disappointment or disappointing part of his game it is the RBIs. He's done a great job at first. Nice work behind the plate. Trying to come up with a big hit here. He of course will be back with the Reds next year. He signed a two year deal prior to this 2014 season. And Lee Cope, but if they push that run across, that would put him in a position to be on the winning side of the scoreboard if the Reds get the lead and then hold it. Single to right by Barnhart. Frazier announces a pinch hitter for Lee. Pirates change pitchers. Worley out. Jared Hughes in. Frazier fan. Negron on a check swing. Beat out an infield hit. And now Pena with two on, two out here in the bottom of the seventh, trying to give the Reds the lead. Two and two. Well, Pena's really had a lot more playing time than the Reds had anticipated, than he had anticipated, and than he has ever had before in one major league year. Comes into this ball game with 343 at bats. That is more than a 110 at bats than he's ever had previously. And he's really delivered a lot more, I think, than the Reds ever thought he would. Good at bat here. He was in the hole 0 and 2. Now a full count. The runners will be on the move. Barnhart out at second. Negron at first. They're off. The first Sanchez will handle it and be painted into the bag. Jared Hughes gets the job done. Reds leap two, stranded seven through seven. Game summary in this 1 1 contest. Gabby Sanchez in the fifth inning, his seventh of the year. Isaac runs out of room. Pirates take a 1 0 lead. Bottom of the inning, Leak. He yanks this one down the left field line. That's a double with two men out. Christopher Negron into center field. Here comes Leak. Runs through the stop sign and gets in ahead of the throw. And the Reds tie things 1 1 in the bottom of the fifth. Leak. In his last outing of the year, very good on the mound. Seven innings, a run, only three hits. That was one of the eight strikeouts he had tonight. It takes us into the eighth inning, and that was tonight's Honda Game Summer. New pitcher for Cincinnati, 
Here's a right-hander, Pedro Villarreal. Now, Pedro was a starter down in the minor leagues for the most part of his major or his minor league career, which has been completely with the Reds since he was drafted by the Reds. This is his third part of the major league season. He came up in 2012, pitched one inning in one game. Last year he pitched in two games, and here he is pitching in game number 12. Look at Jordy Mercer to lead things off. The number eight hitter. Pitcher spot would be on deck, and they have Andrew Lambo in the on deck circle, a left handed hitter. The bat for Hughes, and so they do have action in the Pirate bullpen. That's 44, Tony Watson, a lefty. Mercer tonight is grounded out twice, once to Phillips, once to Negron. 1-1 one, one into the eighth. Off the end of the bat to Phillips. And a good start for Villarreal. Lead off man out. Now Andrew Lambeau made some starts against the Reds over in Pittsburgh. A month ago, will bat for Jared Hughes. Comes on and gets two of the three batters that he faced in the bottom of the seventh. for the Pirates in 18 games and 36 at bats with one RBI. Done a nice job for them off the bench. Five for 12 as a pinch hitter. Well, Lampo remembers this ballpark and this I believe it was here anyway that he hit his first major league home run off of Logan on Drusen, a day in which the Pirates hit six home runs. He hit the sixth. It's this one hard into left field, and Rodriguez looked like he had to get down below the lights on that ball and make the catch. Two out. Stay up to date with the Jackets as they prepare for the season with FoxSportsOhio.com's Rick Gethin on Twitter at Rick Gethin. We're coming down to face off Fox Sports Ohio and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Well, they certainly had a nice run last year getting into the playoffs. Taking the Penguins uh, deep into that first round before ultimately falling, and with that hockey season less than a month away now. Rarity tonight for Harrison. He's hitless. He's 0 for 3. Fooled on that. Yeah, tight little slider right there from Villarreal. Just a little bit of movement down and away. Not very big break right there, but just enough to get the hitter off it. We'll go look at the location. Both Harrison and McCutcheon in the battle for the batting title are over tonight. How about that? Not anymore. It wasn't an easy pitch to hit it didn't appear ah, on an 0 2 pitch that if he didn't hit it it was going to hit the ground. Right, 
Barnhart right before that pitch when he was given a signal to via reality he patted the ground saying I want it on the dirt. That ball was just inches off the dirt. Well, that gives Harrison a 14 game hitting streak and that is a new career high. For the Princeton High School native. I guess Harrison has his own little. Running apparatus little hand. Protector the. All out the one that Billy Hamilton has used and we saw Starling Marte use last year that looks like it's a little extra long. It's the same thing that we said last year that it looked like yeah. those things are a little bit longer than your fingers would be. Or a game of inches huh. Base hit earlier in tonight. One for three. I mean, would they even think about running again? I mean, the way that Tucker Barnhart has thrown the ball from behind the plate. Well, the way that Harrison's season has gone, he'd probably be the only guy that could steal against. Him. I mean, I don't think it would even be a chance right here. Not with Snyder at the plate, home run power, extra base power. Harrison will score on a double. Then you have McCutcheon in the on deck circle. Pirates coming into this game were fourth in the league in steals with 101. They've been caught twice by Barnhart. And the Pirates have taken a two to one lead here in the top of the eighth inning. It looked like Bruce was trying to get under the lights, slid for the ball, and it goes right by the Reds right fielder. Boy, oh boy. And the only way to explain that is it must have been caught in the lights. You know, you get those line drives that are at just the right trajectory, and they never get out of the lights. Bruce looks like he's got it and then simply loses it, and that's got to be the explanation. Boy, that is untimely. I'm not sure of that ball. Could you tell if it actually touched his glove or not? Snyder going to be lifted for a pinch runner. Gregory Polanco will run. Take another look at Bruce here on this ball. Yeah, either he lost it in the lights or the ball was hooking a lot more than he had anticipated off the bat of a left hander. That ball had some spin on it. That'll go down as an RBI double for Travis Snyder. 2 1 Pirate lead now here in the top of the eighth. Gives Snyder's 38th RBI. And again, he's lifted for a pinch runner. There's Gregory Polanco. Also figures to take over and right now McCutcheon. Talked about earlier his prowess with runners in scoring position near 300. Has a chance with a runner on at two out. Textbook. Center field. That's going to get down. That's going to go to the wall. Polanco will score. McCutcheon comes up with a clutch double right there. Back to back, two base hits. 
three straight hits for the Pirates. This all coming with two men out and nobody on against Pedro Villarreal. Yeah, it happens. It almost happens every time, doesn't it? You give a team an extra out, one extra breath. And the Pirates who are battling tough to try to win every game they can right down to the end. Hang a breaking ball up there to McCutcheon and he laces it in the gap. Going to be difficult against this Pirates team now as Jeff Pico goes to the mound. Brian Price is on the telephone. We talked about how the Pirate pitchers have performed much better in the second half. The Pirate bullpen. Second best in the National League since the break at 2.68. Led Hurdle's team now leading by a pair. Trying to put the pressure on the Cardinals who start in 13 minutes out in Arizona at Chase Field. And the pitching matchup out there tonight will be Michael Walker, who has not performed well since the All Star break, against Trevor Cahill, who has lost a dozen times this year and has never defeated the Cardinals. And Neil Walker will draw the intentional pass. Catcher Chris Stewart, who took over for Russell Martin on deck, J.J. Hoover. Up and throwing in the Reds bullpen. Reds in their half of the eighth. Uh, Phillips, Bruce, and Heisey. Anybody gets on, Yorman Rodriguez. Here comes Chris Stewart for the first time tonight after taking over first defensively. Two on, two out, two in. It all started really with that good piece of hitting by Harrison on that 0 2 pitch. Fortunate piece of hitting. He did a good job to get the bat on the ball, but you can't guide it, and it just happened to go up the middle. So he got a two out base hit. have made the most of their six hits that you can say and three of them have come in this inning. Reds have ten hits on the day but they've only been able to push one across. One more Yankee Chris Stewart. Bruce coming on on this Phillips going out it's Bruce in foul territory to retire the side but the damage done. Pirates come up with a pair and now lead 3-1 heading into the bottom of the eighth.
tickets by becoming a Reds season ticket holder with plans starting under nine dollars per seat. Be sure you're here for all the excitement that will include the All Star Game, the Home Run Derby, Fan Fest, much more as the All Star Game returns right here to Cincinnati in the Queen City. For more information, guaranteeing your All Star tickets, you can call 513 765 7500 or visit Reds.com 2015. Young man has seen enough. Says, I won't turn around until the Reds get a base runner on again. Now the pitcher for the Pirates, the left-hander Tony Watson. 76 games that they have gone to Watson so far this year. Exactly the same number of innings. As Gregory Polanco, he pitch ran for Schneider and takes over in right field. Phillips tonight, one out of three. Two balls and two strikes. Trying to get on base to bring the tying run to the plate. It's Bruce who's on deck. Here in the bottom of the eighth. That pirate rally in the top of this inning started with two men out, nobody on. Course for this team for three years in a row now. This year, as Chris mentioned, being the most appearances that he's had. Uh, the one area where Watson has been a little bit deficient, and it's not the ability to take the ball and get out there, as you said, but it's retiring the first batter that he faced. And this year he's faced 75 batters, now 76 at Brandon Phillips. He's only retired 45 of those 75 that he has faced. So 30 times the first batter he has faced has gotten on base. Brandon trying to make it 31. Hit for Phillips. So there it is. 31 times the leadoff man has reached against Watson, and the Reds will bring the person of Bruce the tying run to the plate. How about Sanchez veering way over there to his right? He darn near came up with that. Yeah, he ball. figured he was really the only one who's going to be able to get that ball and make a play. Probably when he started going for it, he thought, well, I can get that on the fly. And the ball just kept going and going and was not able to tag and run it down. Boy, Jay Bruce, you know what he's done against left handers in his career. When it comes to home runs, that is. He'd love to do it right here again. He's had uh, terrific numbers from the left side in terms of the long ball. 
Trying to become only the 12th player in Major League history to produce at least 20 home runs in each of his first seven years in the big leagues. Too shy right now that he has 18. And if he does it here against Tony Watson, it'll be a first for him because Watson has faced Bruce more than any other Cincinnati Red player. And Bruce is one for 14. For 15, as Watson once again gets the best of Jay Bruce. Yeah, he's a hard thrower, Watson is, and unfortunately, we'll choose this one as our Cholula flamethrower of the night, brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. He goes right downstairs with some peas at the knees. Has the opportunity. Pirates by a pair here in the bottom of the eight. In the air to left field. By Marte. Boy, he dismissed that thing. Well, I'll tell you what, he got around quick on that inside fastball. That is really playing right into the strength of Chris Heisey when you have to come inside on him like that. And just got under it a hair. Here's the swing again. I mean, look where he holds that bat. That bat is flat, and he's looking for something on the inner part of the plate, and he drops the head and just gets it a little bit on the end. The ball pretty well tonight. He may like that stance. Rodriguez tonight is 0 for 3. He struck out, flied out, grounded out. He, of course, does not does not have a big league home run. Last year he had 13 between A ball and double A. That's a career best for him. He won't get one here. Jordy Mercer the call. Inning over. Reds leave a runner. We go to the ninth. Pittsburgh leading three to one.
17 for the Reds. Number five, Brandon Phillips flash in the leather. You know, this could just be a daily occurrence, but 107 straight games without an error. That is a new Reds franchise record. And everyone goes through offensive slumps. And he went through a surgery and had trouble getting his timing back, but the defense never left him and never will. And proof positive tonight, our John Morrell hot dog plays. How about this play right there? That is beautiful stuff. Robbie Travis Snyder back in the first, a jumping throw. And then how about a little Ole action? Ole! There we go. Old glove stuff. Brandon Phillips, your John Morrell hot dog plays of the game. Jim Kelch. You know, he lost the gold glove two years ago to Darwin Barney, who's now not an everyday player. Not even in the big leagues. I think the Cubs sent him out on waiver. The Dodgers, I think, now. Phillips got it back last year. I think he's going to get it again this year. Well, I agree or disagree? I agree 100%. Yeah. I don't think he ever should have True. not had it. Right. But Darwin Barney, to his credit, had what he went the whole season without making an error, right? Set a modern day record defensively. Don't get Joel started on that. Well, J.J. Hoover is in to pitch the top of the ninth. Bruce on the run. Bruce with a dive, and Bruce makes the catch. Headed toward the foul line in right field, taking a hit away there from Starling Marte. Boy, a nice running catch right here for Jay Bruce. I got to figure that he feels so bad right now. I mean, that ball get by him that eventually led to two runs in the inning to give the Pirates a two run cushion in this scoreless game, especially the fact that it was in the eighth inning. Usually, you never worry about his defense one bit. Well, I think what you said at the end on that ball was probably what happened that it was. It was coming back on him. He overran it just a step and then couldn't get back in time. Yeah, it could have been a combination of both where you, you lose it temporarily in the lights and the ball is curving and ball was hit like a rocket. Mm -hmm. well, that's really the way things have been breaking for the Pirates. They seem to be picking up the brakes that go in their favor and. When you're looking at a, the number of losses that the Reds have had this year, those are the kind of breaks that go against you. Mark Melanson throwing in the Pirate bullpen. He figures to come on and work in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Reds will have Cozart, Barnhart, and a pinch hitter. Sanchez draws a walk. Look at our direct TV standings for the best records in the National League. How about the Nationals? 94 and 65. They clinch uh, home field advantage in the playoffs with a victory. Earlier today in the first game of their doubleheader, Dodgers right behind them at 91. How about this division though when you look at the 94 games that the Nationals have already won in this division you may not even need 90 wins right now the Cardinals are at 88 wins I think at the all-star break people were saying the Reds could get to 88 wins and they were at 50 at that time 88 wins would probably get them into the postseason as you look at it now yeah. Are we going to be right?
right field off the bat of Mercer. Bruce will handle that. Only one broadcast on Fox Sports Ohio left. That'll come up on Sunday. Make sure you tune in 30 minutes beforehand, as you have, I'm sure, all year here in Fox Sports Ohio for Reds Live pregame presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Proud to be the exclusive home of Reds baseball, Fox Sports Ohio. Remember the only spot you can get it tomorrow is on Fox Sports 1. The game will begin at 1 o'clock. Reds and the Pirates, game two of this series. And then Chris and I will be back on Sunday for the series finale and the season finale. Chance for Johnny Cueto to pick up his 20th win. Talk about success that he has had against Pittsburgh. He has already started against Pi the Pirates five times this year. He's 4 0 against them with a 189 ERA, has a career best 17 wins against Pittsburgh. No other team that he has faced has he defeated. At least 10 times. The Pirates, 17 times. He has the Pirates number like Roy Oswald used to have the Reds number. Yeah. Good comparison there. Thought for a while that Oswald, all he had to do was throw his glove out on the man and he'd get a win against the Reds. For the longest time it was like that. Tommy Glavin was that way, but at Riverfront Stadium. He was nearly unbeatable. Braves came in there and he was on the mound. Top of the batting here for Tony Watson. Melanson will come on and pitch the bottom of the ninth inning. Trying to get the final out here in the top of the night. Detroit has the opportunity to clinch tonight if they could win in Kansas City would lose over Minnesota's all over the Tigers tonight 10 to 3. Kansas City they're leading in Chicago against the White Sox 3 to nothing. So going into tomorrow there could be a one game difference between those two. With two games to play. Kansas City currently is the number one wild card in the American League. Oakland a game behind them. Oakland leading their game tonight at Texas six to one. Seattle trying to hang in in the American League wild card race. Their elimination number is two going into today. Seattle will play later at home against the Angels. They're the best record in uh, the American League. Cleveland mathematically is still alive and they lead. In fact, they won one nothing at home over Tampa Bay. Be a moot point if Oakland wins their game. That would then eliminate Cleveland. Again, Oakland is leading 6 1 at Texas in the fifth inning. Melanson is ready. J.J. Hoover. Next pitch he sees will be the ninth of this A.B. There's Barnhart again. We saw him doing this yesterday. He goes to the mound, puts his arm on the pitcher's shoulder. Like Dusty Baker used to do a lot. Strikeouts in there, one nothing win. Wow. What 
a season he is having. 18 and 9 now with a 244. The strikeouts that he have in that game. He is really striking them out for a starter. 11 punch outs. What do you think? AL Cy Young candidate, certainly. certainly. Yeah, certainly making a run for it. Scherzer in that conversation. Felix Hernandez in that conversation. Eleventh pitch of this AB. Stung to right. Bruce with a slide. Bruce with a catch. Hamada retired. And this game will go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Pirates by a pair at three to one. You by Chevy. Visit your tri state Chevy dealer today and by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, who ranks third in the country on U.S. News and World Report's 2014 Best Children's Hospitals. Reds down by a pair at three to one. Well, I'm on to pitch by pitch. It happened in that inning in which the Pirates scored their couple of runs. That slashing hit by Travis Snyder gets by Bruce. And would you know it here that Former MVP comes to the plate in Andrew McCutcheon. He lines in the left center field gap. That's really all the Pirates have done offensively. They've only collected six hits, three of them in that inning. They played it two runs. And our Mazda pitch by pitch, productive ones in that inning for the Pirates. Meanwhile, in the out of town scoreboard out on the left field wall, the Diamondbacks have taken a 1 0 lead against the Cardinals and Michael Waka. Still batting in the bottom of the first inning out of Chase Field. First pitch swinging against Melanson is Cozart. He's quickly out 5 3. Tucker Barnard, the owner of a couple of hits tonight. Yeah, here's another guy that they have just really leaned on. I mean, the Pirates have not had. The luxury of starting pitching the way the Reds have, where they have guys that have gone deep into ball games a lot. It has always been patchwork for Clint Hurdle all year long. We saw Tony Watson 76 games. This is what 72 now for Mark Melanson. Now that is a ton of games, especially if you're looking. If you're a Pirate fan and you're looking forward. And you're thinking, boy, when we get deep into the playoffs, but well, the guys get deep into the playoffs, they'll be making over 80 appearances.
Barnhart in the hole. Four blown saves this year for Melanson, but nothing since the middle of August. Barnhart strikes out. Zarocco had been on deck, but with no base runner on, he goes back to the dugout. And Jason Bourgeois will come on to bat for J.J. Hoover. In case you're wondering, there are lefties off the Reds bench that they could potentially use. Jack Hanahan, Donald Lutz. But it's Bourgeois who goes up there with two men out and nobody on. 250 since coming up from the Louisville Club in early September with an RBI. It was the team MVP down there for the bats this year. Trying to save it for Tone for uh, Jared Hughes. Trying to hang a loss on Villa uh, Via Real. Gave up those two runs in the eighth inning. And again, all that came with two men out and nobody on. Slowly toward the shortstop. Mercer up over got it. And the Pirates are a winner here tonight in Cincinnati in the first game of this series by a final score of three to one Brian Price will come out and he'll walk out to the first base umpire Jim Joyce and at this point in time they have nothing to lose. He will probably challenge this. We'll take another look at it. He'll look into the dugout to see if it's worth it at all. And it is not. The game ends. The Pirates are a winner. Three to one. Over the Cincinnati Reds. And now they will keep their eye on that Cardinal Diamondbacks game out of Chase Field. In the bottom of the first inning now the Diamondbacks have scored a second run. They lead that two to nothing over the Cardinals. It could very well be at the end of the night of baseball on this September the 26th. Two teams, the Cardinals and the Pirates, could be deadlocked atop the National League Central. Red's Live postgame presented by Performance Kings Honda comes up next. <laughs>